My shop is in a garage in a small space in front of the cars. It gets pretty cold, actually really cold during the winters in Minnesota. So it's not very comfortable working in the shop when the temperature drops. I'll heat the area when I'm working, but I don't want to heat the whole garage from just working in that small space. The other issue we have is dust. Woodworking tools generate a lot of dust, so dust gets all over the vehicles. It doesn't bother me that much, but the wife is not quite so understanding. I put up a simple garage divider curtain on one side of the garage to separate the cars from the shop last year, but I never finished the other side of the garage. Let's do that today. The materials that we'll use include plastic sheeting, I use 4 mil thick, and we'll also use grommets and shower curtain hooks, which I will show later. We'll also use vinyl coated wire rope, lag screw eyes, thimbles, which often come with the wire rope, threaded quick links, clamps, and a hook to eye turnbuckle. To install the lag screw eye, first I pre-drilled a hole for it. I used a 5 16 by 4 inch for the lag screw. You want to make sure this is securely attached in a solid structure to ensure it won't pull out from the wall later. I started the screw by hand. Uh, you can also use an eye hook screw or a bolt chucked in your drill to turn in the lag screw. Uh, just know that it could slip in the chuck unless you grind down the threads. I only had two lag screws to install, so I just used a screwdriver to get some extra leverage. Then I repeated this on the other side. Now I have both lag screw eyes installed and we're ready to move on to the next step. To make the wire rope, we'll wrap the rope around a thimble and install a few clamps to secure it. The locking pliers can be helpful to hold everything together. Tighten the clamp nuts securely using a socket or wrench. Now let's install the threaded link and turn buckle with the eye end in the threaded link. The hook end will go on the rope assembly. I also loosened up the turn buckle so that when the cable is installed later, it'll be easier and I can tighten it up and then take out the slack. After putting the threaded link on the other side, let's check the length of the cable needed. I attach one end and pull the other through the turn buckle hook. I mark the spot for the thimble, which is basically the working length of the cable. To finish the wire rope assembly, we'll make a loop and pull the cable through the clamps and install the thimble, similar to what we did on the first end of the cable. I use the threaded link on each eye lag screw. One end of the rope goes in the threaded link, the other goes on the turnbuckle. Moving on to the grommets, the black piece is the hole cutter, the small piece is the base, and the last piece is the forming mandrel. There are larger and smaller grommet pieces, and then we'll also have the shower curtain hooks that I'm using to hang it from the cable. I'll be hammering the grommets on a piece of scrap wood to avoid damage to the workbench. I folded over the plastic about 5 inches to double up the material at the top and give it a little bit more strength. The holes will go about 2.5 inches from the top. Using the hole cutter to cut through the plastic, hit it with a hammer and give it a little bit of twist to help finish off the cut through the plastic. Install the larger grommet from underneath the plastic and then place the base piece underneath it. Put the smaller grommet washer on top so that it matches the contour of the base and the other grommet. Then hit the mandrel to form the pieces together. I spaced out the grommet locations by about 12 inches. And then just repeat this across the rest of the plastic curtain.
I'm using some inexpensive metal shower curtain hooks, which worked well and were easy to install. Next I'm going to trim the excess cable so the curtain doesn't get hung up on it. I'm using my angle grinder to take care of it quickly. Just make sure you don't damage the other side of the cable that you need. A hacksaw or other metal cutting tools would work also. The next step is to thread the cable through the shower curtain hooks and reattach the cable to the eye screw. After it's connected to the turnbuckle, tighten the center section of the turnbuckle to take up the slack in the cable. I need to trim some excess from the plastic sheeting near the ground. We just need to get it stretched out. I want mine to be a few inches off the ground so no one can step on it and it slides just above the floor. Scissors are fine to cut the plastic. Now I can keep my workspace a bit warmer and reduce the dust that gets in the rest of the garage. When not in use, I use a rubber cord to hold the curtain back to the wall. I hope you enjoyed this simple project to create your own garage divider curtain. I'll have a link below to the webpage with more information on the build so you can make your own or something similar. Also, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up button below and consider subscribing to the channel to see future content. Thanks for watching.